Welcome to this EMV Co webcast on EMV payment tokenization use cases. I'm David Worthington, EMV Co's tokenization working group chair. In today's short video, I will be sharing with you an insight into use cases from the EMV payment tokenization supplementary, a guide to use cases version 2.2.1. We assume those that are listening have a good awareness of who EMV Co is and a basic understanding of EMV payment tokenization and the role that EMV Co plays in this space. If you would like more background information, visit the EMV Co website and watch and listen to our video, EMV payment tokenization, what, why, and how, which can be accessed from the Knowledge Hub on the website www.emvco.com. EMVCO expanded its scope to lead the payments industry to standardize payment tokenization, leading to the publication of version 1.0 of the technical framework in 2014. There are three elements to EMVCO's activity. Firstly, publication and maintenance of the EMV payment tokenization specification technical framework which defines the roles, functions, and requirements that need to be adhered to when introducing EMV payment tokens to work with the payment ecosystem. This includes defining token program, the policies and processes for payment tokenization within a payments ecosystem, requirements for payment tokenization roles, such as for a token service provider or TSP, Secondly, management of registration programs to ensure the global interoperability and support transparency of one token service providers, who they are and what tokens they are issuing. Two, bin controllers to ensure that within the supporting context of EMV payment tokenization, they can effectively implement payment account reference or PAR, which we'll cover later without clashes or conflicts using the globally unique EMVCO assigned bin controller ID. And thirdly, evolution of EMV payment tokenization, a guide to use cases to respond to industry input and show examples of the many new ways in which EMV payment tokens may be used. Although the guide is intended for use by anyone interested in understanding the potential of payment tokenization, it is specifically targeted to all participants in the payment ecosystem, including card issuers, merchants, acquirers, payment systems, payment networks, payment processors, and third-party service providers. It's important to note that product or solution implementation is beyond EMV Co's remit. And again, for more information on EMV Co payment tokenization activity and any of these three elements, please refer to the EMV Co website and under EMV Technologies, select EMV payment tokenization. Why is a guide to use cases important? The guide brings the technical framework to life using real world examples that the payment community is familiar with. It describes key elements such as the token program participants, the relationships between the participants and the characteristics of payment tokens. It also offers examples of scenarios for how a payment token can be used and de details of their associated life cycles. The guide outlines EMV payment tokenization in the real world, striving to be balanced and not too prescriptive. While each use case shows one possible way a payment token could work, we recognize that these can and will be successfully adapted by different implementations. A guide to use cases version 2.2.1 is an informational supplement published in January 
2023. The document illustrates participants from the payment ecosystem, potential token related roles and relationships, and token processes that may be supported by these. It then details a number of individual use case examples with specific assumptions. New use cases will be added as and when identified as being unique, relevant, and of interest to industry participants. We will now look at two of these use cases in further detail. PAR usage within transit systems and uh, card on file e-commerce. So the first use case, payment account reference. Uh, as stated, usually referred to as PAR, is a way to provide a unique reference linking a payment account number, the number on the front of your card, and all of its related tokens. It is never used for transactions, but instead can be used as a reference in third-party systems for linking activities by multiple tokens of the same PAN. For example, merchant loyalty, or in this case, transit open loop travel. PAR implementation is specific to the individual token program or card scheme. And for the purposes of this use case example, an open loop transit payment is one made using a payment credential from a card issuer using a payment system and payment network that is designed to work at all transit operators which support that payment system. This is in contrast to a closed loop transit payment where a transit operator has a payment solution which only works within their own system. Without the PAR data, the transit system would need to utilize other proprietary systems and processes to link the PAN provided at entry to the payment token provided at exit. Alternatively, the transit system may be unable to link entry and exit, which could lead, for example, to the transit rider being charged twice for the same journey. This use case shows how PAR data can be used as a linkage mechanism to simplify transit operator processing when a journey involves use of multiple linked payment credentials for contactless identification at transit entry and exit points. For example, a contactless card, an NFC mobile payment app and or an NFC wearable with tokens all linked to the same underlying PAN. This is possible since PAR data is the same for a PAN and all of its affiliated payment tokens. The open loop payment credential used to enter and exit the transit system is represented by both a contactless enabled payment card, which presents a PAN to the transit system and a consumer device with a mobile payment application provisioned with a payment token, where the underlying PAN is the same as the contactless enabled payment card. And both the contactless card and the consumer device or mobile payment application share the same PAR data. In this example, upon entry, you select a payment credential from the mobile payment application on your consumer device. You enter the transit system using your device at the contactless enabled entry point or turnstile, which receives the PAR data as part of the information passed during the contactless tap. The turnstile verifies the authenticity of the payment credential. Following verification, the turnstile opens, allowing you to enter. The turnstile passes the entry information, including the PAR data, to the transit operator's system. Upon exit, in this example, let's assume that your mobile used to enter the transit system ran out of power during the journey. So the transit rider uses their corresponding payment card to exit the transit system. You exit the transit system using your payment card at another contactless enabled exit point or turnstile. It receives the PAR data as part of the information passed during the contactless tap. Similar to entry, the turnstile verifies the credential and passes the exit information, including the PAR data to the transit operator system. 
subsequent fair calculation and payment, since the PAR data is the same for both entry and exit, the transit operator system can use it to link each event in the journey. And with this information, the transit system can correctly calculate the appropriate fare according to the transit system's rules. Uh, be it a single journey based on a fixed fee, zone-based charges, or even one day multiple trip fares. Once calculated, the transit operator system then initiates a single payment transaction using the token or PAN from the initial tap-in entry. For use case two, let's assume you are interacting with a merchant e-commerce environment, such as a browser or in-app, to make a purchase. Your card payment credential was previously shared with the merchant and for increased security has been replaced and stored by the merchant as an EMV payment token. For subsequent shopping, the merchant may require additional authentication for each transaction. In this use case, we assume that this is done using EMV 3D Secure, usually referred to as 3DS. For more information on EMV 3DS, visit the EMV Co website. Additional authentication may be a regulatory requirement for, a, for the transaction. Uh, for example, SCA, Strong Customer Authentication, as required under the Payment Service Directive 2 or PSD2 within Europe. The use of EMV 3DS addresses the need or possibly regulatory requirement to authenticate that the person conducting the transaction via the merchant's e-commerce environment is the cardholder for the selected payment credential. When the additional payment token data elements are provided, the EMV 3DS access control server can better evaluate the risk of the transaction by linking the merchant, the PAM and cardholder information the additional information may avoid the need for a cardholder challenge or step up authentication process, which would add friction into the overall payment process. So this enables the best possible risk decision support for all participants, the card issuer, the merchant and the cardholder. In this example, one, you were shopping on one of your favorite merchant e-commerce environments. Again, for example, the merchant's website or mobile app, and you have previously shared one or more of your payment card credentials with that merchant. For security reasons, the merchant has replaced the store and stored these as EMV payment tokens. So two, when you get to checkout, you select which stored payment card you wish to use for this transaction and the associated EMV payment token plus this transaction's data are sent by the merchant for authorization. Three, the token service provider validates the token and provides a unique token cryptogram as part of the response. EMV 3D Secure is then used to determine if additional customer authentication is required, using the token cryptogram and other transaction data as part of this decision process. This helps to reduce friction, although regulatory requirements or unusual or large value transactions will still trigger step up for where the consumer is required to authenticate the specific transaction. Uh, such as by confirming the details via their mobile banking app. Once the transaction has been approved, you receive confirmation from the merchant e-commerce environment and any related merchant information about delivery, etc. The payment community recognizes the value in replacing a primary account number or PAN with a payment token to protect our sensitive data and enable new innovations. The EMV payment tokenization specification technical framework is at a mature stage. EMV Co continue to work with the industry to understand how we can innovate and describe new use cases that are of relevance to the payment industry.
Further resources are available on our website. Don't forget to follow us on social media and subscribe to our Insight series online. You can also subscribe to our podcast from your preferred podcast provider. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.